In this lab, we've been told to configure an IPsec VPN between Customer Router 1 and Customer Router 2. We've been given a list of tasks to complete where we have to configure IP addresses on the routers, create DHCP pools on the customer routers, configure NAT, and then create an IPsec VPN. So I'll start with customer router one, open up a console. At the moment, no IP addresses are configured on the router. So I'm gonna go on to interface gigabit 01 and configure an IP address of 8.8.10.2 slash 24 mask per the diagram. And that's an example of IP version four and a half. So I'll correct that and make it 8.8.10.2 and I'll no shut the interface. Gigabit is zero, zero. IP address will be 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask. Now, before I enable the interface, I'm gonna create the DHCP pool. If you enable the interface before completing your DHCP pool, the Ubuntu device will receive an IP address and not a default gateway. So you may have to reboot the Ubuntu Docker container for the lab to work. So to stop that, I'm gonna firstly create my DHCP pool and then I'll no shut gigabit zero zero. Network is 10.1.1.0. Default gateway will be the local router. DNS server is gonna be Google. So now on interface gigabit zero zero, I can no shut the interface and we can verify our IP addresses. That looks good. The router can ping the ISP router. Let's see if it's allocated an IP address to the Ubuntu client. Yes, it has. So on the Ubuntu client, ifconfig, notice it's received this IP address. Route n shows us that the default gateway is 10.1.1.1. So the Ubuntu client can ping the router. That looks good. The router, however, doesn't have a route to the internet. So I need to configure a route. In this case, I'll configure a static default route to the ISP router. I'm gonna enable IP domain lookup and specify a name server of Google and hopefully we should now be able to ping cisco.com, which we can. The client won't be able to ping cisco.com because we need to configure network address translation on the router. Before I do that, I'm gonna go to router two, so customer router two, and do something similar. So interface gigabit zero one, no shut it. IP address is 8.8.11.2 slash 24 mask. Do ping 8.8.11.1. Customer router two can ping ISP three. So that's good. I'll configure my DHCP pool. And what you may wanna do is configure an exclusion range here so that the router doesn't try and allocate its own IP address to the client. That's not specified as part of the lab, but for the real world, you may want to do that. I'll allocate this network. A default router will be 10.1.2.1. DNS server will be Google. Interface gigabit is 00. IP address 10.1.2.1. No shut of the interface. So show IP interface brief. IP addresses are configured. I need a default route to the internet. So the ISP is 8.8.11.1. Can we ping cisco.com? Need to enable IP domain lookup. Specify the name server as Google. Try again. And there you go. 
I can ping cisco.com from customer router 2. What about Ubuntu 2? IF config, it's received an IP address of 10.1.2.11 and the PC can ping the local router. So I've done the basic configuration. I now need to configure both NAT and the IPsec tunnel between customer router 1 and customer router 2. Now, a number of years ago, I wrote the software. The software is called the VPN Config Generator. Now, I wrote the software because I got tired of configuring devices individually and manually and constantly making mistakes. The software allows you to create VPNs, both simple and complex, within a few seconds. So rather than me manually configuring the devices, I'm simply going to use this to make it easy for me. I've now started a subscription-based service where you can get access to all my courses for a monthly fee. And in addition, you'll be able to get access to the VPN config generator as well as other software. I'm also working on some exciting developments. I don't want to say too much yet, but if you join my subscription service, you'll get access to some really exciting stuff in the near future. Currently, you'll have access to software and videos, and that includes all my courses and future courses that I create. But some exciting stuff is going to be happening soon. So I would suggest that you join the subscription-based service before the prices increase. Now, as I've said, the software was written a few years ago. It's only supported on Windows. But what it allows you to do is create many types of VPNs. So in this example, I'm going to be creating an IPsec tunnel with NAT and the routers are using static IP addresses. So in my topology, I've got customer router 1, I've got customer router 2, IP address of customer router 1 is 8810.2, interface used is gigabit01 on the outside, inside interface is gigabit00, internal network is 10 110 slash 24. On router 2, external IP address is 8811.2. External interface or outside interface is gigabit 01. Inside interface is gigabit 00. Subnet is 10120. So essentially, this is what we're creating. We're going to encrypt traffic from 10.1.1.0 slash 24 to 10.1.2.0 slash 24. These are inverse masks because we are using an access list to determine what is interesting traffic. This is the outside interface of customer router 1. This is the outside interface of customer router 2. There are the interfaces. That all looks good. So to create the config, I'm simply going to click on this OK button. And there you go. That's the configuration of router 1. And here's the configuration of router 2. So you can configure this manually if you like. But I'm cheating a little bit here. Over the years, I got tired of recreating configurations. So I wrote the software to make it a lot easier. So I'm simply going to copy this configuration and paste it into customer router 1. Now I must warn you that pasting large amounts of config can cause issues, especially when enabling NAT on these devices. So I might have to paste it back in again. So I'll simply look for errors. Notice here we got a trace back, but it looks like the config was successfully copied in. So just in brief, uh, we've configured access list 100. This is the interesting traffic access list. So traffic that matches access list 100 is going to be encrypted. Now I've got some default IPsec ISA KMP values here. 
you can change these values through the software. So you could change it to use SHA, change your encryption as an example to AES and so forth. But I'm gonna stick with the defaults here because we've not been told to change those values. Here's the pre-shared key. Now you may wanna change that to some other value. So again, that's the default pre-shared key used between the devices. We weren't told which pre-shared key to use. Here are the transform sets that are gonna be negotiated. Here's our NAT access list. Here's our NAT statement. Notice it's pointing to a route map where we only allow certain traffic to be NATed. Traffic that goes through the IPsec VPN will not be NATed. Here's router two, so I'll copy that configuration. So here's router two, conf t, I'll paste that configuration in. All looks good. So let's see if it actually works. Firstly, can router one ping router two? So can we ping from one IPsec router to the other? Show IP interface brief. IP address is 88.11.2, so ping 88.11.2. Ping works, so that looks good. Let's send some interesting traffic. So as a test, I'm gonna send the traffic from customer router one to customer router two, and then we'll use the Ubuntu devices. So I wanna ping this IP address, so ping. 10.1.2.1, we're gonna specify the source being 10.1.1.1. So we wanna make sure that we match the interesting traffic access list, which we do. Notice the ping succeeded. That's good. Show crypto IPsec SA. We can see our interesting traffic access list details. We can see the number of packets encapsulated and encrypted. This is important for encrypted, for decrypted. Do the ping again. Notice it's now incremented to nine packets encrypted, nine decrypted. On this side, show crypto IPsec SA. We can see that nine packets have been encrypted and decrypted. We can see the local tunnel endpoint and remote tunnel endpoint on customer router two, we can see something similar on customer router one. So the next test is can Ubuntu one and Ubuntu two ping each other through the tunnel and can they get to Cisco.com? So Ubuntu two has this IP address. Can Ubuntu one ping 10.1.2.11? Notice the pings are succeeding. And if I open up customer router one's console, while that's running, notice we can see that the packets encrypted and decrypted are increasing. So we can see that our tunnel is working as expected. Do the reverse. Can Ubuntu 2 ping Ubuntu 1. Yes, it can. We can see 38 packets encrypted and decrypted. Now it's 41, 42, 44, and so forth. So I'm happy with that. Encryption looks good. Can this device ping cisco.com? Yes, it can. I'll let that run and notice packets are not being encrypted. So those packets go straight onto the internet. They're not being sent through the IPsec tunnel. Okay, so that's working. Let's use some Wireshark captures to see what's happening on the internet.